In this video lecture, I'm going to be discussing the product rule and the quotient rule for differentiation. So with regards to the product rule, suppose that you were given um, two functions. We'll call them u of x and v of x. And suppose that both of these functions are differentiable. So what happens if I then ask you to compute the derivative of the product of these two functions? Then what would you guess that derivative, the answer to that derivative would be? So one would perhaps expect that the derivative of the product of these two functions is then equal to the product of the derivative of those two functions, meaning you would perhaps expect that it's equal to the derivative with respect to x of the first function, being multiplied to the derivative of the second function. However, that is not the case. So this is not the formula that you would be using to compute the derivative of the product of two functions. Instead, the derivative of the product of u of x and v of x is equal to the following. You will take the derivative of one function, so u prime of x, and then multiply it to the second function. So I'll refer to u as the first function and v as the second. So u prime of x multiplied to v. And then add it. So there's addition taking place to the derivative of the second function being multiplied to the first. So since addition is being used, that means that this is commutative. So it doesn't matter which function you differentiate first and product to the other. Right, so just keep in mind that if you had d differentiated one and multiplied it to the other, then in the addition step, when you're adding the second term, make sure you reverse what you had done. So then differentiate the one that was previously not differentiated and multiply it to the, uh, to the function which was previously differentiated, but this time not differentiating it. So this is your product rule, and this is something that you're going to have to remember. So whenever you're given a function which looks like the product of two other functions, this is how you would differentiate it. So a simple application. Suppose you are given y equals to root x plus 3 being multiplied to x squared minus 5x. So of course, immediately observe, you observe that this is the product of two things. So namely, that which is in the curly bracket and that which is in the second curly bracket. So we will then refer to root x plus 3 as your first function, let's say u of x, and x squared minus 5x as your second function v of x. Right, and we will now apply the product rule to this. So immediately before you proceed, we have a, a radical or a certain here, root x. So always rewrite your radicals in terms of exponents. So root x, remember, can be expressed as x to the power half plus 3 and then x squared minus 5x. So once again, this is u and this is v. And proceeding to compute y prime, we know that y prime is then going to equal to the derivative of u. Right, so I'll write that as x to the half plus 3 prime times v, which is x squared minus 5x, being added to, and now I'm reversing, I'm now going to take v prime, which is x squared minus 5x, the derivative of that, multiplied to u, which is x to the power half plus 3. And now computing the derivative, the derivative of x to the power half plus 3 is a half x to the minus half, and that's being multiplied to x squared minus 5 x. Now taking the derivative of x squared minus 5x, that is 2x minus 5. And it's being multiplied to x to the power half plus 3. And of course you could then proceed to, to distribute this. So multiply out the brackets and simplify. Right, so that is how you would apply the product rule. The next rule that we want to discuss is the quotient rule. So now suppose that you are given the quotient of two functions where u and v are differentiable functions and of course we expect that the denominator is not equal to zero. So then as before, the derivative of the quotient is not going to be equal to the quotient of the derivatives. Instead, 
the derivative of the quotient, the derivative of u divided by v, is equal to the following formula. Again, something that you're going to need to remember. So we will square the denominator, so it's v squared. And in the numerator, we will do the following. You immediately write down v of x, and you then multiply it to the derivative of u. And followed by a negative sign and now reverse what you have done. Previously v was not differentiated so now I'm going to differentiate it and previously the function u was differentiated so now I'm going to leave it as it is. And this is the, the formula for the quotient of two functions. Observe now that we have a negative sign. So that means that we cannot swap around what was written. So we cannot swap the terms that were written in the numerator. As we, as we could have had some freedom in the product rule. So keep in mind um, this formula and remember that an easier way to remember the order is that the numerator is squared and immediately write down the numerator. So then you know that you have to then product um, the derivative of the numerator and then swap what has happened in the first term and the second term with a minus sign between those terms. So now here's an example, h of t is equal to root of t divided by 2t plus 3. This is definitely a quotient of two functions, right? so you can view this as your function u and you can view this as your function v. Now it's, again, as before, whenever you have a radical or a sud, rewrite it in terms of exponents. So we know that root t is just t to the power half, so we'll keep that in mind. So now looking at our formula, h prime of t by the quotient rule, let me write down my fraction. Here is the denominator. I'm going to write it down and square it. So 2t plus 3 squared, and immediately I'm going to write down 2t plus 3. Thereafter, I'll follow by multiplying by the derivative of the numerator, meaning the derivative of t to the power half. So what is the derivative of t to the power half? It is a half times t raised to the power minus half. Then with a negative sign, and now reverse the order of what I've done. So previously, I wrote down the numerator, sorry, the, the function from the denominator. So now I'm going to differentiate it. So I now need to differentiate 2t plus 3, and that is just 2. And now I'm going to multiply it to the function from the numerator, which is u. And I'm going to rewrite square root t as t to the power half. So that's it. So we've actually completed the step of filling in all of the information into the formula. Now all we have to do is simplify this as much as possible. Right, so we have the product of two things. So I'm going to now distribute 2t times half times t raised to the power minus half. So, of course, that's going to cancel, and then I've got t being multiplied, so t to the power 1 being multiplied to t raised to the power minus half. So, what do you do when you have like bases, and you are multiplying? You then add the exponent. So, I've got 1 being added to minus half, so that's t to the power half. And then looking at the second term, 3 times half times t raised to the power minus half, so that just gives me a term of 3 over 2 times t raised to the power minus half and then of course the second term which is 2 times t raised to the power half divided by 2t plus 3 all squared. Continue to simplify wherever you can. I've got t to the power half minus 2 times t to the power half so when you perform that algebra in there you're left with minus t to the power half plus 3 over 2 t to the negative half, again divided by 2t plus 3 all squared. So now I'm going to write down my exponents back into uh, square root form. So now observe that minus t to the power half is simply minus root t. But before I do the same for, this, uh, for the second term, observe that the second term is in the negative exponent and I'd like to rewrite everything in positive exponent. So this is just 3 over 2 and how do I change that into positive exponent? That remember from what you've learned before, x to the negative n is equal to 1 over x to the n. So the same principle applies here. This is 1 over t raised to the power positive half. 
but we know t to the power half is just root t. So that means this is plus 3 over 2 times 1 over root t divided by 2t plus 3 all squared. And then you could go a step further and you can add these two terms. So if I had to add these two terms, I'd like to have a common denominator. Right? So the common denominator here would then be 2 root t. So in order to rewrite this term to factor in 2 root t, then observe that if I multiplied the first term by 2 root t and divided it by 2 root t, so that means 2 root t divided by 2 root t is 1, and if I multiplied the first term by 1 in that form, then what does it then simplify to? So then observe, so this is in the numerator, so I've got root t being multiplied to negative root t. So that means because I've got a square root being multiplied to a square root, that square root is going to disappear. So I'm left with negative 2t in the numerator divided by 2 root t in the denominator. So that's what this term can be rewritten as. So if this term can then be rewritten as negative 2t divided by 2 root t plus, now I'm just copying the second term, 2 root t, and then this is then divided by 2t plus 3 all squared, then observe that now the addition is simple on the top part of the fraction in the numerator because I've got a common denominator in there. So just moving this way onto my page, observe then that this is minus 2t plus 3 over 2 root t, and then that's divided by 2t plus 3 squared. And then going one more time, since I ran out of space, to the left, what I could do is I could, I've now got a fraction divided by something, so I could invert and multiply, so this just then amounts to saying that this is minus 2t plus 3 divided by 2 root t times 2t plus 3 all squared. And that's how it's simplified. I've just gone into the process of um, simplifying at each step, but of course, even if you stopped somewhere at this point, that would have been fine. But um, in terms of the way that you are assessed, um, always aim to simplify as much as possible.